All right, I'm returning. I'm returning with uh, another entry into the video log um, in regards to our basic uh, rights under the U.S. Constitution. This here is a, an opinion by the First Circuit Court of Appeals out of uh, New England. And uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Glick sued the Boston Police Department for violating his uh, First Amendment rights, his constitutional rights. This here is an interesting document to read because in it, the court uh, basically affirmed that you have a right, a First Amendment right to, um, you have a, <coughs> excuse me, you have a First Amendment right to videotape the police. All right, so I'm on page eight of this document uh, of the court uh, court opinion. Page eight, in paragraph A, immunity from Glick's First Amendment claim, and it goes on to read: Were were Glick's First Amendment rights violated? The First Amendment issue here is as the parties frame it fairly narrow, is there a constitutionally protected right to videotape police carrying out their duties in public? Basic First Amendment principles along with case law from this and other circuits answer that question unambiguously in the affirmative. It is firmly held, uh, excuse me, is it, it is firmly established that the First Amendment's ages extends further than the text proscription on laws abridging the freedom of speech or of the press and encompasses a range of conduct related to the gathering and dissemination of information. As the Supreme Court has observed, the First Amendment goes beyond protection of the press and the self-expression of individuals to prohibit government from limiting the stock of information from which members of the public may draw. And it go and as I read through the paragraph, it gives some case like I guess specific cases such as First National Bank, Bank versus uh, Bellati and so forth. But I'm going to continue reading on. It is well established that the Constitution protects the right to receive information and ideas. An important Corollary to this interest is pr protecting the stock of public information is that there is an undoubted right to gather news from any source by means within the law. Now, I'm still reading. I'm still reading word for word from the the, the court. Uh, you know the opinion. The filming of government officials engaged in their duties in a public place, including police officers performing their responsibility, fits comfortably within these principles. Gathering information about government officials in a form that can readily be disseminated to others serves a cardinal First Amendment interest in protecting and promoting the free discussion of government governmental affairs. And it goes on, and after, immediately after that, it's a case that says Mills versus Alabama. Moreover, as the court has noted, Freedom of expression has particular significance with respect to government because it is here that the state has a special incentive to repress opposition and often yields a more effective power of suppression. <coughs> and it goes on to state some more case law and some real leak technical legal stuff that I'm not trying to understand. I'm just a regular guy. I just need to understand the basic grasp of it just like you do. This is particularly, I'm continuing to read on, this is particularly true of law enforcement officials who are granted substantial discretion that may be misused to deprive individuals of their liberties. Observing that the public has an interest in the responsible exercise of the discretion granted 
police, and prosecutors. Ensuring the public's right to gather information about their officials not only aids in the uncovering of abuses, I'm sorry, uncovering of abuses, but also may have a salutary effect on the functioning of government more generally Okay, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I, I got lost on the page. Okay, but also may have a salutary effect on the functioning of government more generally. That was a, that was a parentheses, and uh, I got distracted. Basically, the court is saying you have a right to videotape in public, you know. And it goes on and on and on. But that's what I just wanted to... I just wanted to cover that, those two pages, eight and nine, you know, uh, basically the police can't stop people from exercising their constitutional rights. Uh, the court also goes on to say, you know, cell phones are common in society, uh, you know, police should expect to be recorded. Uh, and so forth. And the court goes on to ask these questions. On page 17, they ask, were Glick's Fourth Amendment rights violated? And so forth. <coughs> I apologize for, like, if my voice sounds a little off, but I think I'm coming down with a bit of a sore throat. Okay, on page 23, there, there was another question. Was the absence of probable cause clearly established under the circumstances? And the court basically agreed. Like, like with this entire case, the court just fell in line and agreed. It says, the last paragraph, the presence of probable cause was not even arguable here. The allegations of the complaint established that Glick was openly recording the police officers and that they were aware of his surveillance. For the reasons we have discussed, we see no basis in the law for a reasonable officer to conclude that such a conspicuous act of recording was secret, merely because the officer did not have actual knowledge of whether audio was being recorded. We thus agree with the district court that at this stage in the litigation, the officers are not entitled to qualified immunity from Glick's Fourth Amendment claim. So basically the court said there was there wasn't even probable cause. There was there, there was no there was not even any probable cause to uh, to to detain this, this this gentleman, to arrest him, to do all this stuff that the police wanted to do. All right. So these are the documents that I have. These are uh, this is why I believe that Maryland citizens, U.S. citizens, residents of Maryland, residents of Prince George's County. This is why I firmly, firmly believe that uh, we have a right to videotape law enforcement officers. Uh, we have a right to document what they, uh, our interactions. We have, we have a right to document their actions when they're arresting or detaining another individual. You know, it serves a strong public interest, in my opinion. And from the documents that I've read through, the courts are generally agreeing with this also. Okay, I'm about to cut off, and uh, I'm going to have to get one more drink of water. Cause, uh, and uh, All right, about to go.